So we went over axis angle rotations last time, which was uh, we had an axis of rotation signified by n hat, an, a unit length normal vector, and we rotated around it counterclockwise theta degrees. But the problem is that if you if you say you want to do two rotations at a time, you want to rotate it by by one axis of rotation and then rotate it again by another axis of rotation. It's kind of difficult to do that with axis angle rotations. Um, they're not very convenient for that. And so we've developed something called quaternions. That can fix this problem. With quaternions, you can multiply, they can represent angles, angles of rotation, and then you can multiply two quaternions together in a certain way and then you add those two rotations together regardless of what the angle of rotation is. And so let's take a look at how to represent a quaternion and it's similar to an axis angle so I'm going to start with that. With the uh, axis angle we had theta and then we had n hat, right? And that was our axis angle re uh, representation. So what I'm going to do for quaternions is I'm going to break n hat apart into x, y, z, y, z. And theta, I'm going to say that's kind of equivalent to w. I'm going to write an equal sign here. They're not really equal, as we'll see in a second. But they're analogous. So when I go to make my quaternion, I'm going to write my quaternion down here. The first part of my quaternion deals with the, the theta. It'll be cosine theta over 2. Cosine theta over 2. So we can see that um, the, the w, and this is the w part of the, this is the w part of the quaternion. You can see that the w part is sort of analogous to the theta part. They're not really the same thing because if theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. Uh, w will be 1. And then as theta increases, W decreases. But again, they are similar. As theta goes up, W goes down. As W goes up, theta goes down. Uh, and then next we have n hat times, uh, sorry, this should be sine. Oh, our friend control and shift is back. Sine theta over 2. So it scales this unit length normal vector, the axis of rotation, by sine theta over 2. If you think about it, if you just multiply by a scalar, and sine theta over 2 is a scalar value, if you just multiply by that scalar, then uh, you're not changing the direction of the n vector. So n continues to represent the angle of rotation, and then as theta increases, as theta gets bigger, sine also gets bigger. So this is our, these are our x, y, x, y, and z portions of our quaternion. Um, as theta gets bigger, sine of theta over 2 gets bigger, and so the x, y, and z portions also get larger. In other words, the more you rotate, the more the x, y, and z portions get big. And then after you're done with all this, you're going to have an, an, an invariant, or in other words, a rule, that says w squared plus x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. This will always be a rule for uh, what's called a unit quaternion. And if, if you think about it, if I put a square root here, if I put a square root, that looks like the Pythagorean theorem, sort of. That tells me that the magnitude of this quaternion is 1 because uh, this, if the square root of 1 is just 1, right? So, so if you think of quaternion as like a four-dimensional vector that sits on a unit sphere, a unit hypersphere, whose, whose radius is 1, uh, which is useful because if, uh, if I multiply two quaternions together, this is, I know this is probably blowing your mind, right? You're like, hyperspheres? What on earth are you talking about? And there's a reason we're doing all this. If you multiply two quaternions together, 
two unit quaternions that represent a rotation. Their magnitudes are both one. And so when you multiply them together, the resulting magnitude will still be one. And so you'll have a rotation that does not change the size of an object. Hopefully that gives you some intuition. Quaternions are very, very difficult and they're difficult to get an intuition on. So my goal over the next few videos will be to help build up that intuition for you as far as what quaternions are, why they're so amazing, why they're so powerful. And again, the reason why we're doing this from the last video is so that we can do a spherical linear interpolation. We're going to be building up to that over the next few videos. Quaternions are hugely powerful and you know I'm just going to stop selling you on them. We're going to go to the code section and learn how to create a quaternion. So similar to what we did with our vector class back in the day, we're going to build this quaternion class from scratch. And this, these are the humble beginnings of our, of our new quaternion class. Uh, you can see all we have here is a, a constructor. It takes the vector n, which is our axis of rotation and it takes a number, a floating point number, which is the theta, the number of degrees that we're rotating by. So it basically it takes an axis angle. And this is our storage, w, x, y, z, just like we discussed in the previous part. So let's fill out this uh, constructor. Uh, one note I didn't mention in the last video, because sine and cosine, uh, the way C++ does it, needs to be in radians and not in degrees. And so we have to do this conversion real quick from radians, from degrees to radians, so that we can, because degrees are better for human understanding. Okay, so W is going to be cosine of theta over two, easy. Now X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna split up into different parts. So we're gonna get N dot X times sine A over two, and copy, paste, paste yz yz pretty simple pretty simple way to develop uh, quaternions and I have some examples uh, that I've shown you that I've developed to show you exactly how this all works if we rotate zero degrees around really any axis but in this case I'm choosing the axis that goes straight down the x-axis which is one zero zero and if we rotate zero degrees, we can see that cosine of theta over two, theta is zero, we're rotating zero degrees, that gives you one, cosine of zero is one. And sine of zero is zero, and so it completely zeroes out our axis of, of rotation. But that's okay, because we're not rotating at all in this case, so really there is no axis of rotation if you think about it. Now when we rotate 90 degrees around that same axis, the x-axis, look at this, 0 0.707107, which I just happen to know, is square root of two over two. Uh, and again, this is w, x, y, and z. So you can see the, the w and the x fields have both received square root of two over two. Uh, and of course, the length of this, if you, if you square them and add it all up, it's gonna be one. And if you look at just X, Y, and Z, these last three right here, if you interpret them as a vector and normalize it, then you get back the original one, zero, zero that we started rotating around. So the axis of rotation is preserved in these last three. Now let's rotate it 180 degrees and something weird happens because 180 divided by two is 90 and cosine of 90 is zero, negative zero apparently. That's <laughs> a weird result of floating point math, but it's zero. And so the, the quaternion for rotating 180 degrees actually has zero as its first uh, parameter, which again is, is, you know, you'd think it'd be like one or two or something. It's very counterintuitive, so as we go on, we're going to build up more and more in a, of an intuition for why this, why this works, why this happens. And again, note that the length of this is zero, or is, is one. Now let's rotate 90, 90 degrees around the, the up vector, zero, one, zero, because we're using y as up. And it looks similar to what we had before, 
W is square root of 2 over 2, except this time it's Y instead of X that gets the square root of 2 over 2. And if we do 180 degrees, then again, it's similar to what we had before. Uh, we have our, and, and again, both of these, if you normalize them, you get back the original axis of rotation. So both of these still represent the axis of rotation, except you have this zero here that's poking its head. And so you can't interpret this as how much we're rotating. It's not, that's not quite the way it works, but you can sort of think of it uh, like that. So next time we're gonna continue with our Quaternions adventure. See you there.